the mean value theorem for integrals, and the average value of a function. All right, so let's take a look at this diagram. Uh, what I have here is just a, a function, and I have a, a region shaded. And what we've learned so far in calculus is that this shaded region, right, that shaded area, if I call this f of x, then that shaded area is the integral from 2 to 8 of f of x dx. We've learned that that shaded area between uh, the curve and the x-axis can be represented by this integral. And it's over 2 to 8 because those are the left and right boundaries. So now, I think, let me draw a rectangle. So what if I drew this rectangle right here? It's again over 2 to 8, but I hope that, you know, just looking at that, you would be able to see that that triangle, uh, that rectangle, if I was to, if I was to shade that whole rectangle, I hope you would see that that rectangle's area would be greater than the integral. And if I drew this rectangle right here, and shaded it, I hope you could see that that shaded area would clearly be less than the integral. But if I carefully choose the height at which I draw the rectangle, so if I draw the rectangle so that its height is right about there, it appears that this rectangle has the same area as that region. All right, so again, this rectangle appears to have the same area as the integral from 2 to 8 of f of x dx. And we can represent the area of that rectangle Well, let's see. If I wanted to find the area of a rectangle, I need uh, I need its length times its width. Now, its length is easy, right? The length is right there. The length is eight minus two. Oops, forgot how to spell L E N G T H. The length is eight minus two. But now the height, well, to figure out the height, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this point right here. And I'm going to say that that point comes from the C value. I don't know what C is, but it's some C value. And so then its height, I can think of as F of C where c is some value. So then the area of the rectangle is f of c times 8 minus 2. Now, as long as this is a continuous function, that value of c must exist. And so, there must be some c so that f of c times 8 minus 2 
is equal to the integral from two to eight of f of x dx. This doesn't tell us how to find the c, it just tells us that the c exists. And in fact, we can talk about this, this is, a, this is called the mean value theorem for integrals. And so here's the mean value theorem for integrals. It says, uh, let f be a continuous function on some closed interval a, b. There exists a value c in the interval a, b, such that the area of, uh, such that the integral, the area under the curve, is equal to some area of a, of a rectangle over that same curve. All right, so remember this we can think of as the area of a rectangle with height f of c. And this is the area under the curve. So let's see an example. It says find the c value guaranteed by the mean value theorem for the integral 0 to 2 of e to the 2x dx. All right, so then the e to the 2x is the function. All right, that's the f of x. The 0 and the 2, that's the a and the b. So if we want to find the c value guaranteed by the mean value theorem, then what we're saying here is this is equal to sum f of c times 2 minus 0. And we need to find the c value that makes this true. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is evaluate this integral. Let's evaluate the integral. Uh, let's see, e to the 2x, I'm going to have to use a, a little substitution here. If I let u equal 2x, then du is 2dx, and so then dx is 1 half du. All right, so then my integral, if u is 2x, then this becomes the integral from u equals 0 to u equals 4. Remember, u is equal to 2x. If x is 0, u is 0. If x is 2, u is 2 times 2, u is 4. And then I would have e to the u times, and instead of dx, I have a 1 half du. I can bring that 1 half outside the integral. And now I'm just integrating from 0 to 4 of e to the u du. Integrating e to the u, that's a easy integral. That's just e to the u plus a constant. Remember for the definite integral we don't include the constant. So I'd have 1, 2, uh, 1 half, sorry, and my antiderivative is e to the u from 0 to 4. So then that's 1 half of e to the fourth minus e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So that's the value of the integral. So, I have 1 half of e to the fourth minus 1, and that must be equal to f of c. Well, let's see. If f of x is e to the 2x, then f of c is e to the 2c times 2 minus 0 is 2. And now I've just got to solve this equation for c. All right, so let's get rid of this 2. I'll multiply by 1 half. 1 half times 1 half is a fourth. 1 fourth of e to the fourth minus 1 is equal to e to the 2c. All right, e to a power. If I need to solve for the power, I can apply the natural log. Natural log of 1 fourth of e to the fourth minus 1 is equal to 2c. And then solving for c, I'll divide by 2. c is equal to the natural log of 1 fourth 
of e to the fourth minus one, divide that by two. And we can use a calculator and this approximates as 1.29761. All right, so again, now what does this really mean? Well, let's get a visual. All right, so I've got my, my graphing program up here. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so what I've done here is uh, on my graph program, I have graphed the function e to the 2x, and I've calculated the integral over 0 to 2, and that integral is 26.7991. Now, what, what the mean value theorem is telling me is that if I take the function value, uh, if I'm sorry, if I take the c value, 1.29761, let's see what happens if I take that c value and look at it in the original function. All right, so I'm going to use my calculate and I'm going to let x equal 1.29761 and what that does, what does that give me? That gives me the function value of 13.3995 alright so that's the f of c now what I'm going to do is create a second function here a second curve and that curve is just going to be that y value 13.3995. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate that function over 0 to 2. So there's the integral of that function over 0 to 2. Hey, look at that area. Look at that rectangle has area 26.799. And if you remember, the integral for the other value, and let's now watch what happens here when I click on the other value. 26.7991, pretty darn close, right? We There's some rounding error in there. It's not exactly the same. But now look what happens. I'm on the, this was the original area. And now look in a sense what happens when I click on the other function. Look what happens to the area. See how it changes shape. See how that area just sort of moves into that other piece? It sort of fills in the rectangle. And so, in a sense, what happens is this rectangle, or this function value, I should say, this function value, what was it, 13.995, ends up being, in a sense, an average value of the function over the interval. Let's clarify what we mean by that. All right, so from our mean value theorem for integrals, we have this statement. If, f of, uh, if the integral of a to b of f of x dx is f of c times b minus a, I can divide through by b minus a, and I can write then f of c is equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And what we saw was this f of c was in a sense an average value of the function. And so what we can do is we can think of this expression 1 over b minus a times the integral of a to b of f of x dx this can be interpreted as the average value of the function over the interval a to b. So if we're asked to find an average value of a function over an interval, we can apply this formula. So let's see an example. Find the average value of the function uh, sine of x over 2 on the interval 0 to pi. All right, so then the average value 
would be 1 over pi minus 0 times the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x over 2 dx. There's the average value. Now we want to calculate it. Let's see, sine of x over 2, I'm going to use a substitution here. I will let u equal x over 2, then du is 1 half dx, which implies that dx is 2 du. All right, so then I would have 1 over pi times the integral, uh, let's see, if u is x over 2, if x equals 0, u equals 0, if x equals pi, u equals pi over 2. Then I'd have a sine of u, and instead of dx, I have to have a 2 du. I can drag that 2 outside the integral, and so I, now I have 2 over pi, integral 0 to pi over 2, sine u du. This is a simple integral to calculate. So I'd have 2 over pi times the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So I'd have negative cosine u from 0 to pi over 2. So then that's 2 over pi times negative cosine pi over 2 minus negative cosine of 0. So I'd have 2 over pi times, now let's see, uh, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so my first term would be 0, minus, minus, plus, the cosine of 0 is 1. So I'd have 2 over pi times 0 plus 1, that's 2 over pi times 1, so that's then 2 over pi, which is approximately 0 0.63662. All right, here's another example. This would be a good one to try on your own. So now would be a good time to pause. All right, let's find the average value of f of x equals 1 over 3x on the interval 1 to e. All right, so average value. The average value is 1 over e minus 1 times the integral from 1 to e of 1 over 3x dx. I could use a substitution here. It would certainly work. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is remember that 1 over 3x is the same as 1 third times 1 over x. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag that 1 third out of the integral. So I've got 1 over e minus 1 times 1 third integral from 1 to e of 1 over x dx. Hey, that's, a, that's an easy integral. All right, so I can rewrite this as 1 over 3 times the quantity e minus 1. And then, let's see, the antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log of x. I should really write natural log absolute x, if I'm being very careful here. From 1 to e. All right, so then that would give me 1 over 3 times e minus 1 times the natural log of the absolute value of e is natural log of e minus the natural log of 1. Now let's see, the natural log of e, the natural log of e is 1 by definition, and the natural log of 1 is 0. And so that's 1 minus 0, that's 1 in the brackets, and so then the average value of the function is 1 over 3 times e minus 1, and again, if you wanted an approximation, at 0 0.193992. All right, so that's the mean value theorem for integrals and how, do you, how that uh, can be used to find the average value of a function over an interval.